good evening friends the topic chosen for today's discussion is safasi act let me thank uh, tirumal for giving a wonderful uh, presentation legends used in this presentation are arc which is self explanatory asset reconstruction company drk debt recovery tribunal ibc insolvency and bank currency court npa non performing asset qb is qualified buyer rbi reserve bank of india sebi is securitized exchange board of india presentation schema is like <clears throat> we'll give a introduction about what safa is all about background structure of the act and uh, with respect to uh, six chapters which contain in this act and statistics with respect to this act introduction what safa is all about safa is nothing but securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest act 2002 it is an act to regulate securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and to enforce of security interest and to provide for a central database of security interest created on property rights and also with respect to offence and penalties and appeals etc the a background about the safasi act the financial sector has been one of the key drivers in india's efforts to achieve success in rapidly developing its economy legal framework relating to commercial transaction did not keep pace with the changing commercial practices and financial sector reforms which resulted in slow pace of recovery of defaulting loans and mounting level of npas in banks and financial institutions based on the narsimhan committee 1 and 2 and other union committee was constituted to understand the purpose of examining banking sector reforms based on their recommendations safasi act has been enacted in the year 2002 to help the financial sector to i mean recover bad debts structure of the act is contains six chapters chapter 1 discuss about the preliminary chapter 2 about the regulation chapter 3 enforcement of security interest chapter 4 speaks about central registry and 4a which has got recently notified in jan 2020 discuss about the registration by secured creditor and other creditors 5 about offences and penalties 6 about miscellaneous chapter 1 preliminary like short title election and commencement section 1 speaks about the abbreviation like securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest act 2002 it extends to all of india it shall be deemed to have come into force on 21st june 2002 important definitions covered in section 2 is asset reconstruction asset reconstruction means acquisition by any arc of any rights or interest of any bank or financial institution in any financial assistance for the purpose of realization of such financial assistance what is arc all about asset reconstruction company means a company registered with rbi for the purpose of carrying on the business of asset reconstruction or securitization or both what securitization means acquisition of financial asset by any arc from an originator whether by raising funds by such arc from qualified buyers which we will be discussing later by issue of security receipts representing undivided interest in such financial assets or otherwise originator means the owner of a financial asset which is acquired by arc for the purpose of securitization or asset reconstruction what is financial assistance all about financial assistance means any loan or advances granted or any debentures or bonds subscribed or any guarantees given or letter of credit established or any other credit facility extended by any bank or financial institution it also includes funds provided for the purpose of acquisition of any tangible asset or higher or financial lease or conditional sale or under any other contract or obtaining assignment or license for any intangible asset or purchase of debt securities non performing asset means an asset or account of a borrower which has been classified by a bank or financial institution as as substandard doubtful or loss asset in order of accordance with direction of rbi as per rbi any asset or any loan or advance where interest and or installment of principal remains overdue for a period of more than 90 days or categorized as non performing asset what borrower means as per safasi act borrower means any person who has been granted financial assistance by any bank or financial institution or who has been given any guarantee or created any mortgage or pledge 
a security for the financial assistance granted by any bank or financial institution and includes a person who becomes a borrower of arc consequent upon acquisition by it of any right or interest by any bank or financial institution in relation to that financial assistance who are qualified buyers qualified buyers means a financial institution an insurance company bank state financial corporation state industrial development corporation trustee or registered arc or any financial management company making investment on behalf of mutual funds or a foreign institutional investor registered under sebi any category of non institutional investor as may be specified by the rbi or any other body corporate as may be specified by sebi chapter 2 discusses about regulation of securitization reconstruction section 3 speaks about registration of arc i mean like uh, rules required for registration of any arc to be floated arc shall carry or commence the business of reconstruction of securitization without obtaining a certificate of registration for rbi and without having a net worth fund of 100 crores every arc shall make an application for registration to rbi rbi shall grant registration if specified conditions are satisfied which conditions will be discussed in further slides rbi can re reject an application if conditions are not fulfilled opportunity of being here to be given every arc shall obtain prior approval of rbi for any substantial change in its management including appointment of any director on the board of directors or md or ceo thereof or change of location of its registered office or change in name condition for granting a arc registration roughly about six conditions are there one the arc has not incurred any loss in any of the preceding financial year that is one of the important condition to be met for obtaining a registration arc has made adequate arrangements for realization of financial assets acquired for the purpose of securitization and shall be able to pay pre periodical return and redeem on respective due dates which means that a commitment of arc to make good or give a returns on the prescribed redeem print date direct of arc have adequate professional experience in matter of relating to finance securitization and reconstruction this again one of the paramount important condition to be met any of the director has not been convicted by any offence involving moral turpitude sponsor of an arc is a fit and proper person in accordance with the criteria as may be specified in the guidelines and are two other condition which are be as per our guidelines cancellation of registration section 4 speaks about cancellation or we may cancel certificate of any arc if we, if it ceases to carry on the business of securitization or asset reconstruction that is one ceases to receive or hold any investment from a qualified buyer has failed to comply with any condition of registration the above five conditions which we have mentioned fail to comply with any directions issued by rbi under the provisions of this act fails to maintain account as per law or rbi order fail to submit or offer for inspection in books of accounts and fail to obtain prior approval of rbi for change in management arc may prefer an appeal to a central government within 30 days from the commencement of order of cancellation section 5 speaks about acquisition of rights or interest in financial asset rbi arc may acquire financial asset of any bank or financial institution one by issuing a debenture or bond or any other security in the name of debenture or by entering into agreement with such bank or financial institution after such acquisition of arc shall be deemed to be a lender in relation to any rights interest documents litigation the arc shall take the place of bank or financial institution section 5a speaks about the transfer of pending applications if any financial asset of a borrower acquired by arc comprises of secured debts of more than one banking or financial institution and for acquire of which bank or financial institution has filed application before two or more drt debt required tribunals at the discretion of arc can select all the pending application to any of the one drts as it deems fit section 6 speaks about notice to obligor and discharge of obligation <coughs> the bank or financial institution may give a notice of acquisition of a financial asset by any arc to the concerned obligor and any other concerned person to the concerned registered authority obligor shall make payment to the concerned arc in discharge of any obligation in relation to the financial assets specified in the notice section 7 speaks about issue of security by raising of receipts or funds by the arc 
ARC may issue security receipts or formulate schemes for the qualified buyers to raise funds for acquiring financial assets and deem them using the realization from financial assets. Section 8 speaks about security receipt issued by ARC, which shall not require mandatory registration under Registration Act 1908. Section 9 speaks about measures for asset reconstruction. ARC may provide one of the following services for asset reconstruction. That is proper management of the business of the borrower by change in or by takeover of the management of the business of the borrower. That is one. Or sale or lease of the part of the whole of the business or the borrower. Rescheduling of the payment of debts, that is restructuring payable by the borrower. Enforcement of security interest in accordance with the provision of this act. Settlement of dues payable by the borrower. Taking portion of secured assets in accordance with the provisions of this act. Conversion of any portion of debt into shares of a borrowing company. Other functions of ARCs. ARC may act as an agent of the financial institution or bank, act as a manager for enforcing security interest on such fees as may be mutually agreed upon by, between the parties, act as a receiver if appointment by any court or tribunal. Other provisions to give a gist of, gist of the section. Section 11 speaks about resolution of dispute among banks, FIs, ARCs are qualified buyers shall be settled by conciliation arbitration as provided in the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996. Section 12 speaks about grants powers to arbitrate to determine policy and issue direction to ARCs. 12 day grants power to arbitrate to call for statements and information from ARCs, which is again one of the primary condition to be complied by ARC. 12B grants power to arbitrate to carry out audit and inspection of ARC. That is again one of the condition to be complied. Chapter 3 uh, discuss about enforcement of security interest. Security interest definition means right, title, or interest of any kind upon property created in favor of secured creditor and includes up to any mortgages and any such title or interest in any intangible asset. Discuss about both tangible as well as intangible assets. Who is secured creditor? Secured creditor means any bank or financial institution or any consortium or group of banks or financial institutions holding security interest. And ARC, whether acting such as or managing a trust set by such ARC for the securitization or reconstruction, as the case may be, or debenture trustee registered with SEBI appointed by any company for secured debt securities, debenture trustees appointed by any bank or financial institution, or any other trustee holding securities on behalf of bank or financial institution in whose favor security interest is created by any borrower for due repayment of any financial assistance. <clears throat> Enforcement of security interest section 13 is very important. The 13 uh, speaks about uh, rights given to a financial institution banking companies to enforce security interest. <clears throat> when the borrower makes a default in relation to a secured debt and such debt is classified as NPA by a secured creditor. This is the paramount condition to utilize or get into this uh, Surfasi Act, primary condition being a borrower shall be categorized as NPA or a defaulter. Then the secured creditor, which may be a bank or financial institution or a debenture trustee as discussed earlier, may require the borrower by issuing a notice under section 13, subsection 2, to discharge in full his liability to the secured creditor within 60 days from the date of notice. Failing which a secured creditor shall be entitled to exercise all or any of the rights for enforcing security interest under this mentioned act. Requirement of classification of NPA shall not apply in case of debt securities. In such case, the debenture trustee shall exercise his right as per security documents exercised in its favor. Notice, notice serve shall give details of amount payable by the borrower and the secured interest intended to be enforced by the secured creditor in the event of non-payment. Borrower can make any representation or raise any objection to the notice within 30 days from the date of issue. The secured creditor, on consideration of his representation objection, concludes that such representation objection is not acceptable or attainable. He shall communicate within 15 days the reason for non-acceptance. Just because the I mean, like notice has been rejected, it cannot be considered as entitled borrower for opting an appeal with the DRT. 
recourse available for secured creditor in case of borrower fails to discharge his liability in full within 60 days as mentioned so secured creditor can take a portion of a secured asset of a borrower that is one to take over of management of the business of the borrower related to secured asset three appointment a management to manage the secured assets four demand notice to the person who has acquired the secured asset from the borrower when a person has acquired uh, the secured asset makes a payment to the secured creditor he shall be discharged of the liability where one of the recourse has been taken by secured creditor the cost incurred for the purpose of shall be recoverable from the borrower which says that after issue of notice if at all a uh, borrower accepted for that and uh, agreed to make the payment any expenses incurred by the secured creditor has to be compensated by the borrower and it shall be duly paid only then that can be released that it is any amount received shall be first to uh, adjusted against such cost and then only towards the dues where the dues of borrower including cost are paid to the secured creditor before public notice for auction or quotations the secured asset shall not be transferred in any manner in case of joint financial arrangement right to enforce security interest shall be exercised only if agreed upon by secured creditor with 60% of outstanding dues it discuss about consortium funding where multiple banks and financial institutions are funded the enforcement can be happened only if 60% of the secured creditors accepted for that when dues of secured creditors are not fully satisfied from the proceeds of secured asset he may file an application to drt for the balance amount secured creditor shall be entitled to proceed against the guarantor or sell the pledged asset without first taking any of the measure of the recourse borrower shall not transfer by way of sale lease or otherwise any of his secured asset referred to in this notice without prior written consent of the secured creditor section 14 says on requesting in writing by secured creditor chief metropolitan magistrate or the district magistrate shall assist in taking portion of the or sale or transfer of the secured asset this speak about symbolic and fiscal position of the asset manner and effect of taking over of management section 15 an arc in case of asset reconstruction or secured creditor and so securities can by way of public notice in newspaper of english or regional language appoints a director in case of borrower company or an administrator of business in other cases i mean like section 15 speaks about the effect of taking over the management if it deems fit that arc has to take over management it can do so by issuing a public notice in a english newspaper or a regional newspaper accordingly and take over management and if it feels that it is mandatory it can run a show that's why it says that management take no shareholder shall not be able to appoint a director and any resolution cannot be passed or winding up procedure cannot be initiated without the approval of the secured creditor on recovery of debts in full the management of company shall be restored to the borrower however secured creditor shall not be liable to restore if controlling interest in the company is obtained by conversion of debt into shares of the borrowing company this is one of the recourse available to the, the secured creditor like if at all secured interest is not being met the they were they are in a position to take up the equity shares in the borrowing company Section 16 speaks about the directors of the company shall not be entitled to any compensation on premature termination of the contract of the management. Section 17 speaks about any person, including borrower, aggrieved by any of the measure taken by the secured creditor, can make an application against it to the DRT within 45 days. Section 18 speaks any person aggrieved by the order of DRT may prefer an appeal to a debt recovery appellate tribunal within 30 days from the receipt of order from DRT. and no appeal shall be entertained unless the borrower has deposited with the appellate tribunal 50% of amount of debt due from him as claimed by the security creditor so i mean uh, generally when any case being referred to drt a feasible solution will be arrived if at all borrower has a grievance towards a secured creditor on the lack of compliance drt after going through the entire procedure if deem fits that sunday creditor like, uh, like a secured creditor made default or a missed out to follow the procedure consequence will be faced or else drt will give a just i mean like a, uh, in favor of secured creditor section 19 speaks about if the drt holds a measure by secured creditor were not in accordance with the act the borrower shall be entitled to compensation 
chapter 4 discuss about central registry it is mandated that provision uh, central government to set up a central registry to record securitization and reconstruction of financial asset and creation of security interest the particulars of every transaction of securitization asset reconstruction or creation of security interest shall be filed with the central registry ERC and security creditor shall file with the central register any modification of terms and condition of the security interest. ERC and sundry creditors, I mean security creditors shall report to the central registry payment in full or satisfaction of any security within 30 days. This recently, I mean, notified chapter uh, 4A, registration of security creditors and other creditors. It will be coming to effect from 24th January 2020. Any creditor, including sec uh, secured creditor, may file particulars of transaction of creation, modification, satisfaction of any security interest with the central registry. Our creditor, other than a uh, secured creditor, shall not be entitled to exercise any right of enforcement of security interest under this act. Registered will constitute a public notice and it is deemed as a public notice, and such registered interest shall have a priority over subsequent interest being created over the property. Every authority or officer of the government interested with recovery of taxes or other dues and from issuing attachment order shall file with the register the attachment order and other particulars of the assessee into the central registry. Secured creditor shall not be entitled to exercise security interest unless registered with the central registry. So it is paramount, important and mandatory for the secured creditors to register under central registry without which they will not be in a position to exercise any security interest under this particular act. Debts due to any subject shall be paid in priority over all other debts and all revenue taxes ceases and other taxes payable to government. So this is one again very important uh, to be noted like any debt to be paid to secrete, uh, I mean secured credit or given priority and it has to be paid mandatorily before, before meeting any liability or uh, taxes due to the government. In a case with pending IBC proceeding, the priority shall be as per the provisions of this Code. IBC is nothing but insolvency and bankruptcy court. Offenses speaks about if any person contravenes an attempt to contravene or abet the contravention of the provision of this act, they will be subject to imprisonment or term exceeding may not exceed uh, one year or fine or with both. And with respect to penalty, where any ARC or any person fails to comply with any direction issued by the RB under this act, the adjudicating authority may by an order impose on such company or penalty in default a penalty not exceeding one crore rupees or twice the amount involved and a further penalty of one lakh per day until such failure continue so it is very important to comply under the standard any small default made will be in a costly affair like a penalty exceeding up to one crore and a daily penalty of one lakh per day on filing continue non-applicability of the section the provision of this act shall not be applied to a lien or any goods, money or security given, a pledge of movable items, the creation of any security in any aircraft, creation of security interest in any vessel, any right of unpaid seller. Any property is not liable to attach or sale under Code of Civil Procedure 1908, such as essential items, clothes, house, salary, wages, etc. Any security interest created in agri land, invariably agri land is not applicable under surpassing a financial institution or secured creditor cannot take agri land any security interest for securing repayment of any financial asset not exceeding one lakh and any case in which the amount due is less than 20 percent of the principal amount and interest thereon so from this it is very very evident that this act is applicable only for secured funding just to give a comparison between what surfacing ibc is all about Enforceability by banks, financial institutions, and secured creditors, including dependent trustees. IBC route only financial institution, operational creditor, and corporate creditors. Involvement of court and tribunals, no involvement. It has been directly done by DRT. Here it is approved by NCLT. Mechanism enforcement as per the Act. Here under IBC route, resolution plan to be submitted and it is to be duly approved by NCLT. Appropriateness, medium and large borrowers of banks and financial institutions. IBC route, only large corporate borrowers. Prerequisite, debt to be classified as NPA. As I said, it should be a non-performing asset. Under IBC route, it is default is made. 
to give a rough data pertaining to financially 1819 effective net recovery rate is 14.5% under sarfasi root and under ibc root it is 42.5% use of root that is 248312 case has been creation and a sarfasi amounting to 289000 crores under ibc root it is 1135 cases amounting to 166000 crores so it it is a volume game under sarfasi the volume is high under ibc it is a very minimal volume but quantity is high. some statistics about the act recovery of stretched asset improved during 1819 propelled by ibc ibc contribute to more than half of the total amount recovered though sarfasi act is in place since 2012 after introduction of ibc all large corporate debts are being recovered via that route However, recovery rates yielded by major residual mechanism, except low cadalets, declined in 1819, especially through the surface mechanism. If you see the rough figure comparison between 1718 and the surface act, number of cases registered is 91,330, amount involved is 81,000 crores, and recovery is 26,000 crores. Against IBC, 704 crores, amount involved is 9,929 crores. But the recovery rate for 1819 is very huge. If for 1718, if you see the recovery rate is 32 percent and 49 percent, where in 1819 it is hardly 14 percent, 14.5 percent under Surface Act. Under IBC, it is 42.5 percent. So details of financial assets securitized by ARCs, book value of asset acquired is 3 lakh 88 thousand 69 crores. Security receipt issued by ARC is one lakh forty-six thousand crores, and uh, security report receipts outstanding is one lakh fourteen thousand six fifteen crores. If you see the comparison figure, sale of ARC has percentage of gross NPR at the beginning of the year. Like more than fifty percent of the public sector uh, banks or uh, NPAs are being uh, routed through Sarfasi Act, which is evident from the figure. So in 2018-19, it is more than uh, 50% pertaining to public sector banks, and uh, all uh, scheduled commercial banks, it is uh, ranging from 10 to 20%. Thank you so much for listening to. If there is any query, send me a mail. We can able to address it. Thank you.